Now I'd like to show you Macintosh in person. Insanely great. Well, today, I'm incredibly pleased to introduce iMac. The Mac OS is still the best thing in the world. This is our store. It's an amazing iPod. This is how tiny it is. You ever wonder what this pocket's for? <laughs> I've always wondered that. Well, now we know because this is the new iPod Mac. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. A truly magical and revolutionary product today. Again, using this thing is remarkable. It's, it's so much more intimate. Thanks for coming today. I was lucky. I found what I love to do early in life. And in 10 years, Apple had grown from just the two of us in a garage into a $2 billion company with over 4,000 employees. And then I got fired. What had been the focus of my entire adult life was gone, and it was devastating. I didn't see it then, but it turned out that getting fired from Apple was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. The heaviness of being successful was replaced by the lightness of being a beginner again, less sure about everything. It freed me to enter one of the most creative periods of my life. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. And like any great relationship, it just gets better and better as the years roll on. So keep looking. Don't settle. About a year ago, I was diagnosed with cancer. My doctor advised me to go home and get my affairs in order, which is doctor's code for prepare to die. It means to try and tell your kids everything you thought you'd have the next 10 years to tell them in just a few months. It means to make sure everything is buttoned up so that it will be as easy as possible for your family. It means to say your goodbyes. Having lived through it, I can now say this to you with a bit more certainty than when death was a useful but purely intellectual concept. No one wants to die. Even people who want to go to heaven don't want to die to get there. And yet, <laughs> death is the destination we all share. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Since the news arrived from California last night and all day today, we've heard people say Steve Jobs changed the world, and it's true. We've heard him compared to Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, Alexander Graham Bell, and it's true. His death was a global event. In his own way, he changed life, and along the way, computing and music. He gave us something to point to with pride. He gave us the icons and the fonts and shuffles and swipes of our modern lives. He was relentless and exacting and unique, and he was dying of cancer during some of the most productive years of his life. Steve Jobs was Apple, and Steve Jobs was the American innovator of the modern age. He's gone at the age of 56, and we remember him tonight, beginning with NBC's George Lewis. With the help of a top design team, Jobs turned electronic gadgets into objects of desire. There was the Macintosh computer in 1984. And it has turned out insanely great. The iPod in 2001. And then in 2007. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. The iPhone. And in 2010, the iPad. So all these things, uh, one after another after another, it's like home run, home run, home run, home run, you know, and there's only one babe. <laughs> in 1976, Steve Wozniak and Jobs co-founded Apple, and within 10 years, it had turned into a $2 billion company with 4,000 employees. They were the most fun years of my life. It wasn't all fun. After losing a corporate power struggle in 1985, Jobs left Apple for 11 years. 
He went into computer animation, acquiring Pixar Studios and striking pay dirt with a string of hit movies, starting with Toy Story. To infinity and beyond! When Jobs came back to Apple in 1996, he began reinventing the Mac, dressing it up in a variety of colors. They looked so good, you kind of want to lick them. Concerns about his health began in 2004 when he underwent surgery for pancreatic cancer. A year later, he spoke about that during a commencement speech at Stanford University. This was the closest I've been to facing death, and I hope it's the closest I get for a few more decades. But Jobs was losing weight, something revealed in these photos taken in 2007 and 2008. In April 2009, he underwent a liver transplant. Five months later, back on the job at Apple, he expressed his gratitude. I now have the liver of a mid-20s person who died in a car crash and was generous enough to donate their organs. Friends say one of the things that drove Steve Jobs was a premonition he had that he would die young. As he told the Stanford grads in 2005, Your time is limited. So don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. Time magazine stopped the presses when Jobs died and redid tomorrow's edition, putting him on the cover for the seventh time. Steve Jobs is uh, Edison in the sense that he was a terrific inventor and innovator. He was a Henry Ford, the businessman. He might go down as the top CEO of any company of any kind in the history of business. Apple employees have been stopping by this improvised memorial at company headquarters. And people have been paying their respects at one of Jobs' residence in nearby Palo Alto. And all over the internet there are images like this popping up on social network sites. Jobs is survived by his wife and four children. A communique from the family said that Steve was surrounded by the people he loved, that he died peacefully. And, but you know, it's more than that because Steve Jobs didn't just change the way we communicate. His, with his keen eye for design and a sleek pair of white earbuds, he made his customers cool. And today they showed their appreciation. The grief mirrored Steve Jobs' worldwide reach, expressed from Times Square to Tokyo in its own unique way. On this morning's Today Show, Matt Lauer demonstrated the power of those products. An iPod, uh. an iPad, an iPhone. I mean, look at that. That's impact. And they are everywhere. An iPhone in the war zone of Afghanistan, an iPod in the International Space Station, and today, the iPad used by this American scientist in Antarctica and the second grade class at St. Margaret of Cortona School in Riverdale, New York. The iPad, they're awesome. New technology that helps the tried and true method. Fighting bad guys while learning math. That, and that makes math cool? Yeah. Jobs' ideas changed our lives as cancer changed his. The digital world Jobs democratized paid its respects. On Twitter, messages came at an estimated 10,000 a second with hashtags such as ISAD. One fan writing, without you, Apple is just a fruit. Tonight, from the virtual world to the real one, a special thank you from all who benefited from Jobs' tree of knowledge. Listen to Steve Jobs during a rare interview, one of his last network television interviews, and for the record, he did not enjoy being interviewed. I sat down with him on the eve of the opening of the flagship Apple store in Manhattan, just a few blocks from here on Fifth Avenue. Now, remember, back in 2006, when we met him at the store, it was the coolest store anyone had ever seen, containing the coolest products you could imagine. And when you think about it, back in 06, Steve Jobs was still just getting started. Listen in this interview to how he sees himself or chooses not to. You, uh, you really don't like introspection. I know that about you. But I'm going to ask you to be introspective for a moment. Where do you fit in the American family of thinkers and inventors? When you see a mouse in public, when you see a click, drag, garbage can logo, all the things you had a hand in, that are part of our daily lives. Where do you put yourself? How do you view yourself and your achievements? You know, I, I, don't, I don't really think that way. Um, Try it. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a private person, and when I think of, 
of, of the most valuable things in my life, you know, I think in my family. Um, and when we talk about our work, you know, the people I work with and myself, when we finish doing something that we're really proud of, the, we want to get on to the next thing. So we're, you know, it, I think if you do something and it turns out pretty good, then you should go do something else wonderful and not dwell on it for too long. Just figure out what's next. So while you should be applauded for saying that about your family in a society that doesn't always venerate those things, the fact that you have left us with the tools of our life now is not really the most important part of your life. You know, that's for other people to figure out. Um, I'm very lucky I get to work with a group of extremely talented people. And, uh, you know, we're racing ahead. We've got some really great ideas of the products we're going to build next year and the year after that we're working real hard on. We're, so I, I think that's our focal length is, you know, is always forward. Steve Jobs often ended his presentations of new Apple products by saying, there's one more thing, and then he'd roll out a new marvel. So here's Anthony Mason with one more thing about Steve Jobs. It's hard to imagine such an open display of grief for any other American CEO. Steve Jobs was a populist corporate hero. These days, that seems almost a contradiction in terms. Jobs challenged us to think different in Apple's famous ad campaign that celebrated rebels. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. An intensely private man, Jobs connected with the public through his products that literally changed our world. He didn't believe in focus groups or market surveys. It's not the consumer's job to know what they want, he said. Wayne he liked Gretzky to quote hockey great love. Wayne Gretzky. I skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it has been. And we've always tried to do that at Apple. In 1984, with the Macintosh, Jobs pioneered the personal computer. And then I got fired. He told Stanford How University students in 2005 it was the best thing that could ever happen to him. The heaviness of being successful was replaced by the lightness of being a beginner again. In exile from Apple, he created Pixar and pioneered digital animation. Hello? Oh, yeah. ah! Pixar's first film, Toy Story, would forever change the movies. Oh, infinity. The bow ties gave way to black turtlenecks. Jobs returned to Apple in 1997, would usher in one of the greatest second acts in American business. The iPod would alter the entire entertainment industry. But Jobs kept innovating, making Apple's products sleeker. And you can get a feel for how thin it is. And smarter. And we are calling it iPhone. Steve Jobs always lived up to Apple's think different ideology. It is the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. At a moment when America needs corporate heroes, we just lost the greatest one of our time. As you look back and as we think back over all those new Apple product rollouts over the years, it is astounding how much innovation this one man is responsible for. Today, for the first time ever, I'd like to let Macintosh speak for itself. Hello, I am Macintosh. It is with considerable pride that I introduce a man who's been like a father to me, Steve Jobs. There it is, right there. Amazing little device, holds a thousand songs. You ever wonder what this pocket's for? <laughs> I've always wondered that. Well, now we know because this is the new iPod Now. This is really hot. An all new design. Now, stop me if you've already seen this. <laughs> Believe me, you ain't seen it. 